All right, I don't know about you guys, but I'm at least a triple three-star gold star sex haver. Like, my dick was literally inside of a woman for nine months straight before I was born. But what if we wanted to go back, okay? What if we wanted to find our virginity again? Well, listen, okay? <laughs> Using the operating system Linux will do that. Okay, let's take a look at my desktop right here. Now, I'd say this is about, like, a solid 50% virginity gain. But, I mean, this shit is literally just Windows, okay? Like, we got a start menu. We have, like, windows we can drag around, okay? You know, we, we can, like, minimize windows. Like, what is this normie shit, bro? Nah, nah, nah. If we want to go full virgin, we got to have some autistic shit like this, okay? Look at this, okay? No start menu. We got, like, our CPU system resources at the top. Oh my god, military time, guys? Th this this is what I want. Listen, I'd say this takes us to about like 70-75% virginity, but in order to go all the way, we're gonna have to install Arch Linux, okay? The final, the final raid boss of Linux, okay? I don't know how it's gonna go, I've just heard people say that it's like extremely like autistic and hard to install, so I don't know. Let's, uh, let's jump into it, okay? Alrighty, boys, so first things first, we gotta do a test install in that virtual machine, okay? I'm not trying to break my computer by installing on an actual hardware. I'm, I'm, I want, you know, I wanna actually kinda learn and just figure out what the hell I'm doing. So here I'm just figuring out how to do the goddamn partitioning, EFI, partition for you, EFI. Put the language, system language, put everything, you know. There's a lot of stuff that goes into installing Arch Linux. <laughs> I don't expect you guys to understand, okay? But, um, yeah, so anyways person that actually arch pilled me okay the person that that gave me the arch linux pill um i, I was watching this youtube channel called uh, eric murphy he's got a lot of arch linux youtube videos and you know he kind of he, he was the, the main dude he was the main dude that kind of convinced me to you know go ahead and switch over and try it out so yeah with that said guys let's let's jump into the pain okay i'm recording this afterwards there was some there was some pain all right, so one of the first things I did was uh, install KDE. That's the desktop environment I'm used to using. I've been using it for a couple of years. Um, I just wanted to get that up and running just to make sure, you know, if that's working, you know. And uh, the first thing I wanted to make sure, you know, worked okay was my virtual machine stuff. I use virtual machines like a mother effer, guys. You wouldn't even believe. So I just wanted to make sure that was all up and running and good on Arch before I continued further down the rabbit hole. And once I got that sorted out, I decided to make a time shift backup, okay? Time shift is an application where you can just back up your shit, back up, restore, okay? Always, always good to use on a new install, okay? But wait a minute, guys. I'm actually kind of having second thoughts about, about Arch, okay? Because let, let, let's just read this shit for a second, okay? Before upgrading, users are expected to visit the Arch Linux homepage to check the latest news. When updates require out-of-the-ordinary user intervention... Oh, what? Bro, is all my shit gonna break when I do a goddamn update? Users must equally be aware that upgrading packages can raise unexpected problems that could need immediate intervention. Therefore, it is discouraged to upgrade a stable system... Bro. They're literally just like, don't update, okay? <laughs> never update. If your shit works, just never update. Avoid doing partial upgrades. In other words, never run pacman-sy. Instead, always use pacman-sey. Why the fuck is this an option then if I'm never supposed to run it, bro? All right, guys, look, I'm going to level with you, okay? KDE, kind of good. It's kind of good. Uh, I've been using this shit for years. But listen, I made a promise. I made a promise to you guys. I can't just break my promise. So we're going to be checking out Hyperland. But I've got an NVIDIA card. When I check out the NVIDIA section on their wiki, like, I just shit my pants like I almost did. Because you, okay, you literally need, like, this unsupported user-created script to get it working. I need to install another goddamn, like, driver. I need to compile a fucking kernel. I need to use, like, a custom kernel. Bro, I need to put this in the config. What the hell is happening, bro? But listen, I gotta do it, okay? I gotta- I gotta grow out the neck beard. I gotta move on. Okay. Alright, let's load this up. Oh god. Alright, never mind guys, I figured it out. Turns out we actually have to load it from the display manager. I think- wait, is this the display manager? I don't know, but here we go. Yo, let's show guys, we finally got this shit working. Oh my god, fuck me, NVIDIA drivers on Linux suck ass. But we got fucking Hyperland. But there's just one problem. What the fuck is this disgusting shit on my screen? Massive oof, guys. As you can see, we got the screen capture. But, um... I mean, we can see the mouse. But, like, that's about it. Yo, I figured it out, boys. We got the screen cap working. Okay. And all I had... I, just, I forgot what I had to... Okay, so I had to get rid of the old XDG desktop thing or whatever. And then I had to install some like pipe wire stuff. 
which is kind of weird. I thought pipe wire was like only for audio, but I, I don't know. I guess it's for other shit too. But yeah, right now the only thing I need, I know how to do is like move them and make new things. I have no idea how to close them. So um, yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to learn some shortcuts. Okay, so apparently I have to like edit, I gotta edit the config in order to like add keybinds because like there ain't nothing here right now. All right, so looking at Eric's page here, we got um, Arch Linux installed. We got Hyperland installed. I want to try to get Waybar now. That's like the fancy cool looking shit at the top here. I want to try to get that. All right, guys, so I went to download this stuff. This is like what I need. Um, but like the build failed earlier. All right, guys, so quick update. We got the bar working. It turns out all I had to do was install it from the official thing. I could have just done this and it would have worked fine. But yeah, we got this. This is what the default thing looks like. I had to install, uh, what is this, like P, Mac control, something? I don't know. Anyway, this thing. And now I have like actual control over like my audio, my output devices, all that. I got my microphone and my headset set up. Uh, quick problem though. If I try to change my volume, Number one, we got the piss sound effect. I don't know why that happened. And number two, my terminal gets spammed with just like random shit. All right, so I think I figured out how to disable that drip drop sound effect. As you can see, it, you, you don't hear it anymore. Basically just had to open up the configuration for my terminal and then search for audio and then I had to turn enable audio bell off. Okay, so basically to get the goddamn sound to work, uh, we got like a low level shit that's like ALSA. And then we got like sound servers, okay. Now we got three options here. We got Pulse Audio, Pipewire, and Jack. Now in order to get my OBS shit to work, I had to install Pipewire dash Pulse. I, I guess, I, I don't know what the fuck this means. I'm using like two of them at the same goddamn time, but I guess it fucking works somehow. Okay, so to fix the sound issue, as you can see, I'm changing the sound now using the keybinds. All you had to do is edit the hyperland.config file, and uh, I added these two lines here. Just uh, increases and decreases the sound by 5% whenever you click it. Okay, so right now, whenever I wanna launch an application, uh, I have to open the terminal and then type the name of the application. So if I wanna open up Firefox, I just type that, and then Firefox opens, but that's a little bit cringe. Now what I could do is create a key bind for essentially every program. So I have one here, control shift F will open up Firefox. I mean, I could just do that for every single program, but I mean, that that just feels kind of scuffed. So instead we got some app launchers here, some recommended app launchers from the Hyperland Wiki. We got Wofi and we got Rofi. Okay, so let's check out Wofi, all right? As you can see, this page is like straight out of 2005. So let's check out Rofi, the next one. It's a GitHub page, looks a lot nicer. The, the web page looks nicer, so I think we're gonna go with this one. Okay, so one thing that's really cool about Arch Linux is that instead of going through the trouble of, you know, installing Rofi, fucking compiling this bitch from source, I don't got time for this shit, okay? So we got the Arch user repository. Basically, user submitted scripts where you can just come in, bibbidi boopity, cop this, copy this shit, and then run this command, and then that shit will just like download and run for you. Now the downside is, you know, you never know if someone's gonna fucking upload a virus to this shit, but I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm just, just cross my fingers every time I install something new. That's that's just what you gotta do. All right, and there we go. Looks like it's installed. So if I run Rofi, okay, so I just had to add this uh, dash show D run. And then look at that, we got our stuff. We can search for stuff. I can t open Firefox again. The only problem is, this looks like complete ass right now. Okay, if I look at the if I look at the if I look at the video here, it, it it looks so much cooler. Like what what? All right, so apparently this thing comes with a lot of default themes. So let's just uh, let's just try them out one by one. Okay. All right. Well, this one definitely looks different, but uh, I think I kind of want one with like the icons on the side. Okay. I want to see some some visuality here. Okay. This theme is just complete ass. I can't even see. I can't even read the text, bro. All right, so we just found the first example config that actually has the icons here, and um, not gonna lie, it's not it's not looking the best. Yo, wait a minute, guys. Okay, so the Eric Murphy dude, he's got a uh, not this one. He's got a GitHub repository where I can just go ahead and just yoink this uh, this Rofi theme. Okay, I'm just gonna yoink this file. All right, so I just copied his config file. Let's uh, let's see if this boy runs. Okay, that's a that's a problem. Nice, we got it working with the icons, but the only problem is I can't I can't see behind it. Bro is too transparent. Ah, there we go. All right, guys. So this terminal, I mean, it's a terminal. It's okay. I mean, if I type some commands, you can see we got a little bit of colors, but by and large, this shit is just black and white and just kind of ugly. 
All right, lads, so I just decided to just bibbity boopity do everything here. So um, I don't even remember what I recorded last, but I just went ahead and, you know, just did it. So we got the fancy ass bar at the top. Oh my God. You also see that when I open up my terminal, it looks good. Like it doesn't look like shit. So this terminal is actually using something called ZSH. So basically we have like the bash shell cringe. This is some boomer shit guys, okay? But yeah, so ZSH, if I ever wanna do like a thing, it's got like the nice highlighting and it's also got like completion. So these are some like plugins I installed. And then we also got some fancy ass buttons on the top. So open up chat GPT here. You bet your bottom dollar I cleared my history because I got some, uh, <laughs> then I'm also able to easily, you know, go ahead, swap these boys around. I can make a new thing. I can close this. I can go to another workspace, do some other shit here if I want. And I got the, the tabs at the top. They got a nice switch animation. Hell yes. Also updated the launch menu here. So I think, I'm not sure if I showed this before, but like the icons look kind of bigger. And then for my file manager, we're using Dolphin. Dolphin is just, is just the best file manager, bro. I ain't even going to cap. Yeah, we can do, we can full screen applications easy. No problem. And most of this setup was actually done from uh, the Eric Murphy dude. I just copied a lot of his config files and, you know, messed around with them a little bit. Then I also found this tutorial here. Well, it's more of like a showcase really by uh, my boy. My Linux for work, okay? I also kind of yoinked his status bar at the top. You'll notice it looks a little bit similar to mine. But yeah, this video was only posted like a week ago. And it's, I mean, it's kind of convenient. I jumped on the Hyperland bandwagon at this time, okay? Because, man, bro, if I was trying to figure all this out without someone that already had some like config files up, bro, I'd be dead, okay? I'd be gone. And the last thing I want to showcase here is my uh, virtual machines. Let me just start this boy right here. And you'll notice we got a little, we got a little Windows button right here. So if I click this, it's got my virtual machine showing up. So the way this is working is, uh, let me just full screen this. I got two GPUs right now, okay? So I'm passing through one of my GPUs into the virtual machine and then I'm using a program called Looking Glass to actually like render that and make it smooth and good. But uh, it's kind of annoying having this be on like one like small part of the screen. So let me just move it to another workspace here. Bibbidi boopity full screen it. And now I'm able to just easily swap between these two. So let's just say I'm just vibing in hookshot hardcore, okay? I wanna just zoom over here. And then let's say that, okay, I wanna go back over here. I wanna just like install a, install install everything real quick. I can do that and then just whoop, just switch back over here. It kind of, uh, when I press the Windows key, that's for my keybind, it kind of brings this up. So that's a little bit annoying, but you know, we switch back over here and then we're still, we're vibing again. Honestly, I've never used it like a tiling window manager before, so I thought it would be like really annoying, but it's actually kind of convenient because you can just like, boop, we got this, we can move this, we can switch this, open this, like we can do, we can do so much shit, guys. And uh, yeah, the only downside is you have to be extremely autistic to know how to set this up in the first place without it crashing on you and breaking. But other than that, guys, I think we're kind of vibing. I think we're kind of rolling down the hill, rolling down the highway. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think I think with that, guys, I think we've achieved you know maximum virginity here. I've grown like at least a five inch long neck beard at this point. Um, and yeah, hope to hope to keep using this. We'll see. I've never used Arch Linux before. Uh, I was concerned about like the stability, but I don't know. It seems pretty stable. So anyways, guys, I'm about to head out here and. Goodbye.